I have always been fascinated. I mean, going back to high school and college, I've been fascinated with the placebo effect. The placebo effect is basically when a patient is given an inert pill, a sugar pill, or a saline vaccination or something like that, but generally a sugar pill. And they're told that the pill will cure a certain ailment. So in other words, I've got an arthritic knee and it really, really locks up on me and I feel a lot of pain, especially in the evenings and when it's cold, it flares up in the winter time, I need some help. So a doctor might give that patient a placebo. So they would give them a pill and say, this pill is cutting edge stuff. It's just on the market. It's gonna help your arthritic pain. Take two of these a day and you'll be as good as gold. And sure enough, uh, the patient calls the doctor back and says, uh, and I, I don't know what the time frame might be. It might be a matter of days. It could, uh, f they could feel relief immediately. It could take longer. And they call the doctor up or the doctor calls them and they check in with each other. And it turns out that the pain in the knee is gone. The arthritis is way better. Maybe it's been resolved. That's a placebo effect. Now that's fascinating in and of itself, but I found and I uh, had heard about this and I started printing out some stories and I stopped because there's more than one study to verify this, that the placebo actually works even when the patient is aware that it's a placebo. This is mind blowing to me because you would think it's the idea that the patient is being tricked into believing that this pill is going to somehow miraculously solve their ailment, but that's not the case. Even when they're told it's a sugar pill. So they did this and they uh, said on the bottle, I'm trying to find on here, the researchers recruited people with irritable bowel syndrome and gave one group no treatment and the other a regimen of twice a day pills that were described as like sugar pills. I'm sorry, it's always quiet out here until some damn plane's flying overhead. I think it's the stunt pilot that does loop-de-loops and stuff. It sounds like that kind of a plane. It sounds like a mosquito in my ear when I'm doing videos. It's a mosquito in my ear when I'm doing these videos. Oh, man. I don't like noise. I don't like noise, especially in the forest. It disturbs me. So the word placebo was also printed on the pill bottles. And the team was up front that the medicine had zero active ingredients. So these patients were told this pill is essentially not going to do anything. It's just a sugar pill, it's a placebo, it has no active ingredients whatsoever. Over three weeks, the researchers monitored the patient's reports of symptoms and found that 59% of those who received the placebos reported relief from their symptoms, compared with 35% in the control group. This is huge. It's uh, almost double what it was in the control group. So this is very, very big news. This is from 11 years ago this particular study, but it's been done since then. It was done before that, where they specifically examined if the placebo would lose its effect, in other words, once the patient knew that it was a placebo. Here they were outright told it's a sugar pill, it does nothing for you, it has no active ingredients, and people still had results. One possibility, according to the research, as to why this happens, and, and the, the placebo effect is controversial in and of itself. You'd think that there'd be some kind of a consensus on it, but there isn't. Even to this day, there's a lot of questions behind why it works. I believe my reasoning for why it works is the mind is fucking powerful. I'm sorry, but it is. The mind is the most powerful thing in the universe. I believe so. And the mind can cure and the mind can make sick. Depending on your thoughts, your mind can poison you or it can cure you. And I believe that that's a foregone conclusion. I believe that there's no debate in that argument whatsoever. That the mind is so powerful, it can trick you into believing something even if it isn't true. And it can make you happy, it can make you miserable. It can make you sane, it can make you insane. It can alleviate your back pain or it can cause back pain. I mean, it really is amazing what the mind can do. The researchers here thought one possibility of why a known placebo would still work is that the ritual itself of taking the medicine might be enough to induce the body into producing endorphins that relieve pain. 
that's pretty incredible in and of itself. So in other words, just the ritual of, sorry, it's just all this chaos. I don't like chaos. That dog barks at everything that walks by, every little leaf that falls on the ground. Anyway, um, so what they're saying is, is the, the brain might think that just by taking the pill, so the, the brain in the body might be duped into thinking that just the ritual of taking that pill is going to produce some sort of an effect. So it releases endorphins, which relieve the pain. So it could be the endorphins releasing the pain separate from the placebo, but it's the ritual of popping the pill and swallowing it that gets the body in that cycle of re releasing the endorphins to begin with. It really is amazing. So there you have it. And uh, one of the re researchers said, our results challenge the conventional wisdom that placebo effects require intentional ignorance. It used to be believed before maybe 10, 11, 12 years ago that the placebo, in order for it to be effective and to work, the person taking it had to be totally in the dark. You had to lie to the patient. And there's a lot of ethical questions on the placebo too. In Britain, um, particularly where these studies were done, uh, let's see here. According to a 2008 study in the British Medical Journal, despite the ethical pitfalls associated with prescribing dummy medicine, some researchers estimate that as many as 50% of physicians in the U.S. have prescribed placebos without telling their patients. <laughs> as many as 50% of physicians. That's in Britain. That was in 2008. I don't know what's changed in those years. But it really is amazing. I love talking about the placebo effect. I don't know that I've ever done a video here on my channel on this, but I'm going to... I'm going to have more on here because I think it's a very, very fascinating subject. A lot of people, I'm surprised, still aren't really aware of what the placebo is or how powerful the effect of the placebo is and just how the mind really is the biggest placebo. Our thoughts are the biggest placebo. In fact, one of my mentors, Dr. Joe Dispenza, has a book titled You Are the Placebo. The mind is an amazing, amazing thing. And I wish we took as much interest in the mind, most of us, as we do about football games and soccer tournaments and, and just stuff that we spend so much time on. If we put a little bit more energy into studying the mind and a little bit less on kind of stuff that's just entertainment, we're entertaining ourselves to death, I think. And I'm not trying to sound like a curmudgeon, I'm really not. But I think we need to approach the mind with the excitement that we approach a circus, that we approach a boxing match, for God's sakes. We, we take more enthusiastic indulgence into two men beating the shit out of themselves in a boxing ring than we do about parallel universes and, and how the mind works and, and, and uh, the multiverse and the placebo effect and quantum mechanics and quantum physics. If the average person was as interested in that and pursued that as much as they pursue the flavor of the month and what idiot is wearing what jeans this month and what idiot's marrying which other idiot, that uh, people who are famous for being famous and for nothing else, I don't know. I think we'd be way, way, way ahead. We'd be way, way, way ahead. And I think it's where we need to be. I think we need to be that far ahead. Um just my thoughts. There goes another airplane. All right, I'm out of here. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Please press the like button if you liked what you saw and what you heard. If you didn't like it, then don't like it. I'm not going to be one of those that says like it no matter what. If you liked it, like it. If you haven't subscribed and you're curious and would like to subscribe, you can. I'm not charging you anything. It doesn't cost you to be on the YouTube. It's just pretty uh, cool to have uh, a little tribe of intellectually curious people joining me here and motivated people and inspired people. That's what I'm looking to build as a tribe of intellectually curious and always truth-seeking, mystery-seeking individuals. So thanks a lot, and I hope you find something you like here, and I hope you'll want to stick around and come back for more. Coming at you from the beautiful South Sound of the Evergreen State, Western Washington, I'm Spencer Hughes, and thanks for watching my channel.